Hello everyone and welcome to InfoSec Train. This is Rishabh Kotyal and today we are going to discuss AZ-104 exam questions which is your Azure Administrator Certification. So today we are going to discuss few exam questions related to your AZ-104 certification. So let's just start with the very first question. The very first question is your company currently has the following infrastructure setup on premise network IP address ranges 172.16.80.0 slash 24 and your on premise VPN device public IP address is 40.12.0.5. Okay, so now we will be talking about the your Azure Virtual Network. In your Azure Virtual Network, your name of that network is your staging network. IP address range is your 10.4.0.0 slash 16. Now, your subnet A is also there, and that subnet A is having the range 10.4.0.0 slash 24. I think no one is confused between your IP address range and subnet. Okay, so IP address range is a wider range where you have given a small range of one particular range where you can add, you can have 255 hosts in the subnet A that is your 10.4.0.0 slash 24. I think networking concepts are clear up to this point because that is going to help you to answer this question. And I think the next question also going to have the same infrastructure. So keep this infrastructure in mind. Okay, now the company wants to set up a site to site VPN connection which of the following would you create in the virtual network? Okay, so my question is asking that my company, it wants to start the site to site VPN connection and which of the following I'm going to create first in my virtual network. Okay, so on the next slide, I will be showing you the option for this particular question. You have to guess the answer from them, right? So your options are, okay, so which of the following would you create in the Azure Virtual Network, okay? And you have to think that this time you are just starting to configure the VPN. So now we will be discussing these options that what could be your possible solution, right? So what we will be doing, we will be seeing with the your option A, which is route table. Okay, so I don't think personally that you are going to create route table at this very beginning, right? So option here, again, you know, if I choose option C, that is also not going to be the answer because if you have practically deployed the VPN anytime, so you would be easily understanding the answer for this question because what my particular company is wanting me right now that I should go ahead and deploy a VPN and what is the very first thing? after creating because already there is a network there is your on-premise network there is your vnet also right now there is a subnet also that is existing in your vnet so what is the next thing that you are going to create when you are about to deploy a vpn okay so if i highlight the important part of this question is this right so this is the highlighted part Okay, so you have to focus, set up a site-to-site -site VPN connection and you are creating in the virtual network. So the answer for this particular question is your B, a gateway subnet. So if you guys have deployed it, so you will be knowing the gateway subnet is the most important thing when you will be deploying your VPN gateway. So that is the way you know, uh, a subnet you will be creating in your VNet which will be with the name gateway subnet and if you have seen that there is the option to create a, a gateway subnet at the top in your azure portal as well so gateway subnet it contain the ip addresses that the virtual network gateway services use and by mean virtual network gateway i mean your vpn services they use right and we need to create a gateway subnet for my vnet in order to configure a vpn all gateway subnet must be named gateway subnet to work properly and that particular subnet should not contain anything else. You are not going to deploy 
any VM or anything else in that particular gateway subnet. It should be completely empty, right? And Microsoft is suggesting that your range for that particular subnet is going to be with the uh, slash 29 and but they are encouraging you to have a particular subnet of the your particular range of slash 27 or slash 26 or slash 25 they are encouraging here and when we create the gateway subnet we specify the number of ip addresses that particular subnet is going to contain the ip address in the gateway subnet are allocated to the gateway service so some configuration may require more ip addresses to allocate it to the gateway service than the others and you want to just make sure that there is enough ip addresses to accommodate for the future growth and possible additional new connection and configuration so that's why it is suggested that there should be slash 27 or slash 26 or slash 25 range for your particular vpn gateway subnet right so the answer for the question number one is your option b a gateway subnet now let's just move to the question number two so our question number two again having the same infrastructure where on premise network ip range is 172.16.80.0 slash 24 your on premise vpn device public ip address same 40.12.0.5 as you virtual network having the name of a staging network ip address range is going to have your 10.4.0.0 slash 16 subnet a is going to have the range your 10.4.0.0 slash 24 and the company here it wants to set up a site-to-site -site vpn connection which of the following you specify as the ip address range in the local network gateway resource you create in the azure right this time you are actually wanting to set up a site-to-site -site vpn connection okay and this time you are going to create a resource which we call a local network gateway resource now if you have deployed you will be familiar that when we are launching a site-to-site -site vpn we have to specify that particular resource with the name your local network gateway now which of the ip address range you are going to specify in that particular local network gateway so let's just first see our options here our options are a 40.12.0.5 slash 32 second is your 40.12.0.5 slash 16 then again 172.16.80.0 slash 24 D 10.4.0.0 slash 16 and E 10.4.0.0 slash 24. Okay, so these are your options, and out of this, what is going to be your IP address that you are going to specify in your local network gateway resource? Okay, so first thing is what is your local network gateway resource? It is just the representation of your on premise network in your vpn right so that resource is going to represent your on-premise network so what is the specified range of the ip address in your site right on one site okay on your on-premise system or your on-premise center so what is the address range so you are going to specify that over there you are going to specify its public ip address your own premise centers public ip address as well you will be defining in the local network gateway with that you will be defining the your private ip range of your on premise center there so in this one if i again take you back to the questions i will be highlighting that what is the ip address range for your on premise network so this is your on premise network ip address range which is 172.16.80.0 slash 24 so the answer for this question is going to be your C 172.16.80.0 slash 24, right? So you can just check it out on the question as well. So this was your question number two. So if you have deployed the VPN practically, you should be knowing the answer of the first two questions. Okay, so let's just discuss question number three. In question number three, you have to deploy an application onto a set of virtual machines on Azure. You need to implement design aspect of 
scalability and availability for the application which of the following could be used to implement the aspect of scalability right so in this question what are our options which can help us to maintain the scalability let's just take a look into the options so your options are a azure virtual machine scale set b azure availability sets and c azure availability zone so in this question you have to find out that which particular line will help you out to find your correct answer right so first thing that you need to understand is this particular in this particular scenario what is happening right so in this particular scenario you are deploying a particular machine right you are deploying the particular machines okay i have highlighted that part that you are deploying a particular machine okay a set of particular machines and you are deploying an application on those particular machine now you have to maintain the aspect of scalability so you can see that i have highlighted that part as well that you have to maintain the scalability so out of these options we have the option b azure availability sets that is going to help you to maintain availability azure availability zone also going to help you to maintain availability but they are not going to help you with the scalability scalability can be handled in this scenario with the help of azure virtual machine scale set where you can define that if a particular vm is having too much of stress right it is having a lot of processing to do it has lot of traffic to handle you can simply deploy another instance of the virtual machine right so you can define those rule with the help of a huge virtual machine skill set so the answer in this particular question is going to be your a azure virtual machine skill set right so answer for question number 3 is going to be your a azure virtual machine skill set now let's look at do the question number 4 the question number 4 is which of the following tool could be used to determine underutilized virtual machines running as part of your azure subscription so in this particular question we have to find out that which of the particular service can help you to find out all the underutilized virtual machines and for this question you have four options and those four options are your a azure advisor b azure subscription c azure policies and d azure resource group so even person who has prepared for az 900 which is azure fundamental can answer this one as well right so out of these four options if i talk about the azure subscription azure subscription is not going to help you to find out that which particular machine is currently underutilized neither the policies can state that which of the particular machine is underutilized right now neither your azure resource group which is option d can help you out in this scenario right so if you know about the azure advisor it suggest you the best practice to follow in the your azure cloud service provider right so it is a service which will be helping you out that what settings you should enable what steps you should take to make your subscription make your resources more utilized more you know better deploy your solution in such a way that it could help you out to save bit of the money as well right and from the security perspective as well so the answer for this particular question is going to be your a which is your azure advisor okay so the answer is your a azure advisor let's move to question number 5 now okay so we'll take a look on the question number 5 so question number 5 is you have a set of virtual machines set up in azure you are testing for inbound connectivity from several data sources you need to use a tool to diagnose incoming traffic connectivity issues which of the following you use for this purpose so here keep one thing in mind that you have a set of vms and you are testing for inbound connectivity from different different data sources it could be the internet or some other vnet or some on premise server right so you are testing for the incoming connection and you have to use a diagnostic tool for the incoming traffic connectivity issues so that means 
we will be looking few options which will be related to your network watcher this is one of the monitoring tools to troubleshoot or check out the connectivity between different data sources whether or not your network is performing up to the mark right so we have multiple different different tools in the your network watcher so let's just take a look into your options here so your options here are a network watcher next hop b network watcher ip flow verify option c network watcher vpn diagnostic and option d network watcher energy flow locks right so now out of all these questions i think if you have performed this task as well these options will be very familiar to you so if i start with the option a which is the next hop right and prior to jump into directly into that if i highlight part which will be helping you to find out the answers for this question is going to be your this testing for inbound connectivity from several data sources so we are testing for the incoming connectivity and a tool which will be helping us to diagnose incoming traffic connectivity issues so a next up it helps to determine whether traffic is being directed to the intended destination by showing us the next stop so here you will be just getting the answer that what is our next hop okay what is our next device so it is not helping you out that which is going to be the uh, whether or not your inbound connectivity is working up to the mark or not okay now second is your let's just talk about option c right vpn diagnost so it is going to help you to troubleshoot gateway and the connection issues it giving you the summary information and detailed information about the vpn issues that you are facing right and helping you to troubleshoot gateway or connections uh, very simultaneously right that will be helping you in the cases of the vpn and option d is again your nsg flow log so if you have seen the nsg flow log it helps you a lot well we are talking about the getting the logs regarding the nsg right because nsg is the place where you can get almost all the logs regarding the network because all the incoming and outgoing traffic they are going to go through the nsg flow log so it is going to help you to view the information about ingress and egress ip traffic through the nsg right and all those logs are going to be written on the json format okay so we left with the option b which is your network watcher ip flow verify and option d is the right answer so your ip flow verify it diagnose the connectivity issues from or to the internet and from or to the on premise environment okay so it will be just letting you know that if your internet issues your connectivity issues are there or not it help you to find all the connectivity related problems so it will be telling you that all the inbound connectivity are in place or not right and it is ideal for ensuring the security rules whether or not they are correctly being applied right that you have written some energy rules that this connection should be allowed or disallowed so whether or not they are working fine it will be helping you find out that as well and guys this is going to be it for this particular easy one of our exam question session so thank you for joining us into the infosec train videos and we hope to see you in our upcoming future batches regarding the azure so if you guys are interested you can check our website www.infosectrain.com with that if you want to contact us there are a few numbers in your screen you can contact us visit our website contact our sales and book your next training for the azure itself so this was rishab kutia and we were having a session on easy 104 exam questions thank you for joining for sec train